Today is November 1st, 2024. It's the Day of the Dead for some, and if you're tuning in from the UK, happy All Saints Day. The day is historically a time for remembrance and renewal, which makes it a fitting theme as we look at the shifting dynamics in crypto and digital finance. My name is Nicodemus, and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. Today, we'll take a look at three key stories that could redefine the future of digital assets in the United States. First, we'll discuss Coinbase's recent stock drop, and that drop apparently comes as the result of a difficult earnings report. We'll also consider how the upcoming U.S. election might set the stage for a comeback. Next, we'll look at the U.S. Treasury's latest focus on stablecoins. We'll consider the delicate balance between innovation and government oversight in digital finance. Finally, we'll analyze Donald Trump's pro-crypto stance. This comes as he enters the 2024 election arena, putting crypto policy in the spotlight. These events illustrate how politics and regulation could shape the future of cryptocurrency. So let's jump into today's stories. The U.S. election is emerging as a turning point for the cryptocurrency market. Coinbase has taken center stage as a key player. This follows Coinbase's disappointing third quarter earnings, which saw its stock price take a hit. The question is, could a change in the political landscape be the catalyst that Coinbase needs to rebound? Now, their stock dropped over 7% after missing expectations for third quarter revenue. Investment bank KBW reported a shortfall of 3% compared to their projections. Revenue also fell 5% below consensus. Now, the downturn was largely due to lower transaction volumes. There was also a dip in subscription services. However, reduced operating expenses kept the adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation and amortization stronger than expected. KBW noted a rise in retail trading volumes, but this was offset by a reduction in retail fee rates. This led to weak commentary for the fourth quarter. On the optimistic side, JMP analysts noted Coinbase's focus on new product development. They also mentioned growing institutional interest. Now, JMP sees these factors as important steps towards wider mainstream adoption. They also view the upcoming U.S. presidential election as a potential game changer. They expect the election to encourage a bipartisan push for clearer crypto regulations, which would be nice. This could prove to be beneficial for both Coinbase and the broader crypto landscape. Now, Canaccord echoed a similar sentiment. They noted that a change in regulatory policies might boost Coinbase's growth. It also means that the Coinbase SEC case could end up being dropped. Now, Canaccord also believes that Coinbase's growth in staking and custody services shows resilience. This is despite lower trading volumes and market volatility. Coinbase isn't the only company that's struggling. Robinhood also experienced a rough quarter. Its shares dropped over 13% after third quarter earnings failed to meet expectations. Key areas like account growth and net asset acquisition fell short. JP Morgan lowered their price target and raised concerns over the company's slowing momentum. However, JMP took a different view. They stated that Robinhood's earnings were not far off from expectations. Their argument is that the immediate market reaction was overblown. JMP even raised their price target slightly, showing confidence that Robinhood could still outperform. So the common thread here is regulatory clarity and institutional adoption. Both Coinbase and Robinhood are dealing with uncertainties. This could lead to fluctuating revenue streams and shifting regulations. The upcoming U.S. election could be a turning point. It promises regulatory stability that could either help or hinder these platforms. Analysts seem to agree. Better regulations pave the way for growth and broader adoption. So in a market dominated by rapid changes, clarity can make all the difference. For Coinbase, Robinhood, and the entire crypto sector, the stakes in this election are not just political. They're financial. Wall Street's message is clear. With a more stable regulatory environment, these platforms could be ready to break new ground. The U.S. Treasury's latest report on digital assets has stirred up something of a debate. It hints at potential changes that could reshape the crypto landscape. Central to this discussion are stablecoins, tokenization, and that tension between private finance and government oversight. In a new report, Treasury Borrowing Advisory Committee mentioned the risks and opportunities of tokenizing U.S. assets like Treasury bills. This group includes Wall Street heavyweights like Citigroup and Goldman Sachs. Now, they're saying that tokenization could bring huge improvements in speed, transparency, and efficiency. Blockchain could allow transactions to settle and clear instantly, which would minimize the risk of settlement failures. It could also streamline an industry that is notorious for its red tape. The committee proposed the need for, quote, trusted central authorities to oversee these innovations. That idea should worry crypto enthusiasts. Now, their concern is that the growth of stablecoins like Tether could pose risks if not properly regulated. A major stablecoin's collapse could lead to the rapid sell-off of U.S. Treasuries. That could destabilize broader financial markets. So the proposed solution is for state-backed central bank digital currencies to eventually replace private stablecoins. It's similar to how the government-backed currencies replaced wildcat currencies in the 1800s. But the Treasury's concerns do not end there. The report points out that stablecoins like USDT and Circles USDC hold over $120 billion of Treasury bills. Many in the crypto world see stablecoins as allies of the dollar. They create demand for U.S. government debt and theoretically boost the dollar's global presence. But Treasury isn't buying it. 
Stablecoins do frequently lose their peg or collapse, making them a risky part of U.S. public finance. Adding to the debate is former President Donald Trump. Now, he's vowed never to accept a CDBC if he is reelected. He called it a, quote, dangerous threat to freedom. Now, this may not be entirely coincidence because his own crypto project is working on issuing a stablecoin. This kind of thing is not unusual in the digital asset space, where political rhetoric often clashes with business ambitions. Stablecoins are increasingly popular. They're now used in over 80% of crypto transactions. Despite this, the Treasury is worried about their impact. They suggested that stablecoins need regulation like banks or money market funds. Without this, they could endanger financial stability, especially with their increasing treasury holdings. Treasury's message is clear. Digital assets like stablecoins and tokenized treasuries can transform markets, but the risks must be managed. History shows that unregulated private currencies lead to instability. The government does not intend to ignore this lesson. Now, the bottom line here is that tokenization may bring efficiency to finance, but government control will play a role in how this evolves. The question is whether innovation and regulation can coexist, or will government oversight limit the changes that it wants to manage? The future of digital finance is at a crossroads. One path is led by private enterprise. The other is shaped by cautious regulators. Only time will tell which road will define the next chapter of digital assets. The crypto world got an endorsement from former President Donald Trump. He noted the 16th anniversary of Bitcoin's creation this week. But his message went beyond a simple birthday wish. It was a statement in the debate over how cryptocurrency should be treated in the U.S., which is a key issue in the 2024 presidential election. So Trump got on X and wished Bitcoin fans a, quote, happy 16th anniversary of Satoshi's white paper. He also pledged to end Kamala Harris's, quote, war on crypto if he's elected. He promised that Bitcoin would be made in America. And this surprising stance contrasts with Trump's previous dismissal of Bitcoin as a scam built on thin air. With the election approaching and polls showing a tight race, Trump's change of heart might be aimed at winning over the growing community of crypto investors. Now, the stakes are high. Vice President Kamala Harris, now running for president, has taken a more measured approach to digital assets. She emphasizes consumer protection and regulation. Now, she's linked to the Biden administration, which has not been well received by the crypto industry. Critics, such as Bitcoin entrepreneur Eric Finman, argue that Biden's regulatory approach has hurt innovation. SEC Chair Gary Gensler's tenure has been criticized for treating digital assets with outdated securities laws. There also are misleading claims circulating on social media. On October 30th, MicroStrategy Executive Chair Michael Saylor posted quotes from an interview that never took place. This post suggested that Trump proposed abolishing capital gains taxes on crypto. Now, despite being false, this post gained traction. It was reposted by Bitcoin advocate Anthony Pompliano on LinkedIn. Now, the last that I'd heard, Saylor had not removed the post, raising questions about misinformation influencing voter views on crypto. Mark Cuban also weighed in on the election and its impact on crypto. He said that Harris's team opposes SEC tactics under Gary Gensler. Cuban suggested that Harris might take a different approach if she's elected. He argued that, quote, regulation by enforcement has been harmful and a leadership change could bring more clarity. Cuban believes that Harris prefers the bright line regulations, clear, straightforward rules, and this could prevent crypto companies from moving offshore to develop applications. With Election Day nearing, the debate is shifting. Voters want to know which candidate will make the U.S. friendlier for crypto companies. Trump has positioned himself as the pro-crypto advocate. After all, he is backing a crypto project, World Liberty Financial. He also pledged to pardon Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht. Harris, meanwhile, has only made cautious remarks about supporting innovation, which has led to a lack of clarity that some say could plant fear in the crypto industry. Analysts are divided on how a Harris presidency might impact the crypto ecosystem. Now, some are saying that her ties to the current administration could continue the existing unfavorable climate. Others, like economist Yao Wei Yang, believe that she might accept more accommodative monetary policies. This could increase liquidity and benefit crypto prices. Venture capitalist Tim Draper has warned that overregulation could drive innovation away from the U.S. entirely. This sentiment is echoed by crypto firms considering moving to countries like Singapore and the UAE. Trump's pro-crypto stance is a very sharp pivot that raises questions. Once a vocal critic of digital assets, he now supports Bitcoin. And to be sure, this shift may be politically motivated, maybe not. Is his support based on conviction or a strategy to win voters? And while Harris has faced criticism for lacking specifics, Trump's promises are also ambitious. His goal of having Bitcoin made in the USA and restricting mining to the US has raised some eyebrows. The future of crypto regulation in the US is uncertain. Both candidates offer very different visions. Crypto traders and investors will have to weigh their options. The outcome of the 2024 election could dictate whether the U.S. remains a major player in digital assets or falls behind nations more open to new technology. Crypto policy isn't just a financial issue. It's also a political battleground shaping the tech future of the U.S. 
Trump promises to put Bitcoin at the forefront of American innovation. Harris takes a more cautious approach. The stakes go beyond campaign slogans. The real test is whether either candidate can turn their rhetoric into a framework that allows the industry to innovate while protecting the public. This balance has yet to be found. And that's going to do it for us on a Friday. And we covered some key points. From Coinbase's latest earnings report to the Treasury's concerns over stablecoins. We also talked about the political maneuvering in support of or against digital assets. As we approach the 2024 election, the relationship between technology and policy is only deepening. The outcomes could alter the course of blockchain and AI industries. Now, please take just a moment to like, follow, and subscribe the podcast. It really helps us reach more listeners just like you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.